in this section of 13.2, we're continuing to look at limits of functions of two variables. Here we want to find the limit as xy approaches 0, 0 of the expression x minus 2y all divided by x squared minus 2xy plus 4x minus 8y. Now we can use the path method, approach it from the path y equals x, find the value, approach it from the path y equals 0, find the value, um, and see what happens. From the path where y is equal to x, we get the limit as x comma x. Replace all the y's in this with x. Oh, you know what we should have done first is to plug in 0 in for x and y. If you plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, you get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. That means you cannot determine the limit simply by plugging in the values. You have to use some other techniques. When we do the path method, we're going to go approach 0, 0 from the path y equals x. We're going to replace all the y's in this, this limit with x. So we get x minus 2x in the numerator, x squared minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8x in the denominator. By simplifying this, you get the limit Sorry, as xx approaches 0, 0, since we're now dealing with a single variable, we can write it as the limit as x approaches 0 of what we get simplified in the numerator is negative x, and in the denominator we get negative x squared minus 4x. Again, if we plug in 0 in for x here, we get 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we need to use another method. We can continue to simplify this using algebra. Find the limit as x approaches 0. You can factor out a negative x from the numerator and the denominator. In the numerator, you get 1. In the denominator, you get x plus 4. And now we get to the point where we can plug in 0 for x, and we find that the limit is 1 fourth. So that doesn't mean that the entire limit is one-fourth. It just means that from that path, y equals x, the limit is one-fourth. So let's see if we can find another path that goes to another place. And we want to consider all the possible paths. If we find two that go to different points or different values, we can say that the limit does not exist. So let's find another path. Let's find the path y equals 0. And both of these paths will approach the point 0, 0. So we're replacing the y this time from the original limit problem with a 0. Find the limit as x0 approaches 0, 0 of what we get when we plug in zeros for all those y's. We get x in the numerator, x squared plus 4x in the denominator. Now again, you can plug in 0 for x and 0 for y here, you get 0 over 0. But we can continue to simplify using algebra. Since we have a single variable here, we can write it as a limit as x approaches 0. If you factor out an x from the numerator and the denominator, we get 1 over x plus 4. So when we plug in 0, we get 1 fourth. So it appears that we found two paths that go to the same value. Now, that does not mean that the entire limit goes is equal to one fourth. We just found two paths. Again, we're looking at this going to the point zero zero, and we looked at it from two different paths. We looked at the from the path y equals x and the path of y equals zero. That's just two paths out of say an infinite number of ways that you can get to that point zero zero. Zero. So unless we try all infinite number of ways, and we can say that they're all equal to one-fourth, then we could say that the limit is one-fourth. But that, of course, is impossible to do, to find every possible path using this way. The whole idea of using the path method is to find two paths that go to different values. So it looks like we're going to have to use another approach here. We're going to do solve this algebraically. Yes, using algebra. Let's go ahead and use algebra to factor the numerator and the denominator. Well, it looks like the numerator cannot be factored, but we can write this. 
we can factor the denominator by grouping. We have x minus 2y is a factor in the numerator, and it looks like out of the first two terms in the denominator, we can factor out an x. When you factor out an x, you're left with x minus 2y. Out of the second two terms, it looks like you can factor out a plus 4, and you'll be left with x minus 2y. So you see that common factor of x minus 2y. So this limit can be written as a limit as xy approaches 0, 0 of x minus 2y is a factor in the numerator, and it's also a factor in the denominator, and x plus 4 is the other factor. You go back to review the factoring by grouping method so you'll find those two factors. And using algebra, these two factors are the same. You can divide out those, and you end up with this limit of xy approaches 0, 0 of 1 over x plus 4. Now, by substitution, you'll find that the limit is equal to 1 fourth. In this case, we use algebra to find the limit rather than using the paths. The paths are inconclusive. It only tells you that from two paths you get to 1 fourth. But using algebra, you find that the limit does equal 1 fourth. So that would guarantee all paths approaching 0, 0 would equal 1 fourth. Here's another example of finding limits. First, you should plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, and you'll find that you get 0 over 0 in indeterminate form. Now, we can try the path method. We can try using algebra here, uh, but there are different techniques, and you'll find that one of them is actually using the polar conversions to simplify this. If you are approaching the point 0, 0, the point as xy approaches 0, 0, that is actually the same thing um, xy approaching 0, 0 ends up being the same thing as the radius approaching 0 in looking at polar. The polar conversion equations that we use are x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta and another conversion is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So by making those substitution, perhaps we can simplify this limit. The limit of x, y going to 0, 0 is translated to the limit as r approaches 0. And by using the substitutions, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, so we can square those. And in the denominator, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We can then plug in 0 for r, but again, we get that 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we've got to continue to use algebra here to simplify. The limit as r approaches 0 of these r squares can be simplified of r cosine theta sine squared theta. Now we can plug in 0, and we, we see that the limit does equal 0. So that's by using conversion. And if we use the path method, we would find that all of the paths, no matter what paths we chose, they would all get closer to 0. Okay, here's another example of a limit. If we plug in 0, 0 for a and b, we get the sine of 0 over 0, and we know that's 0 over 0. It's an indeterminate form. So by using conversion equations, a polar conversion equation, instead of a and b, or we have, uh, instead of x and y, we have a and b. So we can use the same polar e conversions. We can say a is equal to r cosine theta, b is equal to r sine theta, and um, a squared plus b squared would be equal to r squared. So by using those conversion equations, the limit as a b approaches 0, 0 can be written as the limit as r approaches 0 of the sine of the square root of a squared plus b squared. That would be sine of the square root of r squared, or sine r over r. 
and that again will simplify to zero over zero in determinate form. Now remember, if you have a, um, when you did limits in your calculus one and calculus two class, if you got an indeterminate form zero over zero, you can use L'Hopital's rule. You can use L'Hopital's rule here after we did the conversion because it is a limit of a single variable. You cannot do use L'Hopital's rule for functions of two variables. So using L'Hopital's rule, we can rewrite this as the limit as r approaches zero. The derivative of sine of r is cosine of r, and the derivative of r is one. Now when you plug in zero, you get the cosine of zero over one, and the cosine of zero is one, so we can find that the limit is equal to one. By using the conversion equations, we can find this limit. If you're using the path method, no matter what paths you take, those are all going to lead to one.